right, everybody, welcome to episode number three of Project SuperVantage. So we got a little off track, um, some other projects that we were working on and then closing up the race season here at Area 27. Our boys were real busy supporting some of our customers for that. But we got some time now to jump back on the Vantage. So if you have a look here in the engine bay, you can see Mike's got the cylinder heads back on, installed on the car. We had to go through and he had to take a look at what they'd done with the head gaskets. There was some um, non-standard drillings on them, which had been done to um, alter some of the coolant path. Um, something that the engine builder had had planned for. So we had to modify one of the cylinder, or sorry, excuse me, one of the head gaskets that we'd received one of the OEM ones to match the other side. You can see in here, this structure here, um, this is part of the original ESX kit. So this is the coolant um, passage pipes, which are non-OEM. And you can see they've actually designed this with some billet pieces here and here which do allow coolant to flow inside of them, but also have some mounting structure here. So as we continue to assemble this later on, you'll see that this is one of the locations that they use to provide some mounting and structure for the Rotrex blower. You can also see down here, something that definitely doesn't go with that blower. And this is actually the intake and uh, intercooler for a 4.2 liter Jaguar Land Rover supercharger. Um, if you turn around and look over here, you can see some of the original parts. So we got the other bank here, we got the fuel rails here, and then this is the OEM supercharger. So this is what comes on like a 2005, 2006 Land Rover, Range Rover supercharged. Why do we have this here? Well, one of the things that had always intrigued us was how feasible it would be to figure out how to retrofit this blower onto this car. Not something that was like a super high on our priority list, but we have the car here. We've always kind of scratched our heads on that one. For those of you who are familiar with these engines, you know that they are derived from the same engine family. So the 3.8 liter Lincoln V8s um, kind of evolved into the 4.2 liter supercharged Jag Land Rover engines, which formed the basis of what Aston Martin did when they semi-dry sumped this engine and um, set it up for normally aspirated operation. So what we did discover is that the intake ports do match the head. Um, these two bolt holes here line up directly onto the head um, and you can fasten that directly up. These three do not. Um, it was a little bit of a project, but we decided to um, size the stuff up in there just to see how close it was to fitting, whether or not we could remove these and design some adapters, some other runners, maybe to allow you to run injection here or allow you to run port injection of, of water methanol as well and adapt that blower to fit on the car. In the end, our conclusion was that it can be done, but there's a lot of stuff on the back side of the engine where it draws the air in from on this blower. Um, you can see back here, there's quite a bit of wiring and some other items that we'd have to relocate. Could we do it? Yeah. Could we do it relatively easily once? Yeah. Is it something that's really feasible to produce as a kit and send out to people? We came to the conclusion we'd be better off just starting from scratch. So. This was just an interesting side note to this project, something that we'd always been intrigued by and wanted to have a look at and evaluate. So that was definitely a no. Um, but as far as where we are with this, heads are back on. The engine is now timed correctly. So we had mentioned in one of the earlier episodes, uh, the reason the previous owner of this car couldn't get it to run correctly is that the cam timing was off. Um, it was off by about 30 degrees and he had been tinkering around with the tuning, trying to mess with where the cams were in their maximum minimum positions, trying to get it to run and couldn't figure out why. We were able to help him diagnose that at the time. And that's when this first cylinder head came off. Um, we pulled the other head off just to double check, make sure that those valves and pistons were all clean. There was no contact there. Just one piston on the right hand bank where a valve had just ever so slightly kissed it. So that head's been completely rebuilt. It's all back on the car. It's all timed up again and we're ready to start dropping the ESX supercharger into the car. At this point, we are gonna take a look at some of these parts. We're gonna evaluate the feasibility of whether this is a kit that we can replicate or build off of so that we can produce a rotary kit uh, to ship out to customers worldwide. Um, there's a couple of things about the kit that are included that we won't replicate. Uh, it was originally supplied with a, a plate for the throttle body with some extra injectors in there. That's how they were fueling it. We now have the ability to map these to run um, significantly more fuel through larger injectors to handle the boost. And this engine, of course, has been built with a little bit lower compression specifically set up for boost. So 
we're moving along pretty quick with this car. We're pretty much ready to get uh, everything bolted back up again and start running it and tuning it. We do have a couple little cosmetic items that we need to do. So we mentioned in our previous video that we were looking at maybe doing some enhancements as well. But once we got this guy up on the hoist here, we discovered that's no good. That's going to get replaced. We've got a new chin splitter to go on the car too. So we're going to start going through and looking at the cosmetic things next. But first and foremost is get the car bolted back together, get it up and running. We've got this powder coated intake here ready to go on. We've got all the rest of the components on. So I think we're on the home stretch as far as getting the car fired up and running. In the next couple episodes, we should be able to talk you through um, some of the stuff we need to do to get it tuned properly and up and running and get it on the dyno. So we'll see you then.